I, I'm making a film and uh, the words that so often come to mind when I'm uh, engaging with uh, the people I'm, I'm talking with and interviewing are humility and gratitude and inspiration. Uh, this this uh, community energi energizes me personally. It also makes me feel so connected uh, to, to makers, to eaters, to friends. Uh, I'm humbled by the traditions, the knowledge and skill involved in feeding our communities. I appreciate the work it takes for uh, so many of us to make us healthy and whole, not just as individuals, but as communities. And uh, I'm inspired. Um, uh, we're, I think we all are. We're inspired to teach, to tell stories, and to um, be good listeners to stories of other people. So uh, that's some of what I've been trying to capture in in um, in the process of making this film, and I just want to share uh, a little of it with you now. I think that. Building local food systems is culturally important because it connects, it connects us more deeply to place and to our wider community. Um, and, and I think that ecologically, building local food systems makes, makes our food system more resilient and more adaptive um, and, and helps us step away from the commodity food system. We had a transition in uh, dining services at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, and we were looking for a lot more regional and local food. And uh, that started in 2014. Uh, and we realized that we didn't have a lot of Colorado, you know, grains, the, the ones that we wanted. We wanted to get, to get the ancient weeds. And we saw that they were not available, but they used to be grown here, at least the heritage grains. I don't, I don't often use the word activist to describe myself, but I feel like I care deeply about uh, my food and where my food comes from and who's growing it and the planet. What have I got all my boulder in you? Uh, singing the praises of flavor and nutrition, as well as the benefits of building a local grain economy, which includes the bakers, the chefs, the consumers, and the farmers. Our main mission at the Bread Lab is to, is to really keep value where it's produced within an agricultural community. And in doing that, we also strive to help farmers produce food that's nutritious and flavorful as it's used throughout the system for millers, maltsters, bakers, uh, and on within a system, but really wheat is a classic example of how the value can be lost within a community. If it's, if it's just grown as wheat and then basically taken away and comes back as flour or some other food product, our mission is to keep that within the community. I came up baking sideways. I guess I had been farming in this region for three years. Um, and so I'd met a lot of bakers and I knew that they were really great. And so when I decided I was not going to be a farmer, I was trying to think of another way to be part of the local food system and um, working with my hands and also intellectually engaged um, in my work. And so I thought, oh, I could be a baker. It can't be, it can't be any harder than farming. And so I decided to <laughs> become a baker. It's really microbiology at work. In other words, you're in, inserting bacteria into the soil to give the soil fertility. And so it made sense to me. And I started uh, spraying on biodynamic preps that I made myself from originally stolen buffalo patties. We would drive to a, a ranch down by Scott City where they had buffalo and we'd sneak out there under the fence and grab those buffalo patties and bring them home and make uh, fertilizer. The buffalo are 
the originators of soil fertility in the plains. It's not from cows or llamas or ostriches or sheep. It's from buffalo. So there's probably a different kind of bacteria in a buffalo digestive system that is the flora and fauna of the microbiology of the plain soils. Our first customer was Moxie Bread Co. in Colorado, a new bakery. Uh, he was using our wheat as kind of the, the first uh, maybe local-ish source for grain. Tell me about Louisville because um, it, I'm just driving in across the train tracks there. It doesn't seem immediately like a place for a kind of, maybe it's not a high-end pastry shop, bakery, but it, it doesn't seem immediately like the kind of place that would support the kind of place you've been thinking of. So Louisville is a very interesting town with um, a lot of heart and uh, a lot of uh, kind of hometown loyalty. And it's a lot like a Norman Rockwell painting from, you know, 70 years ago of, of, a, of a small town, you know, American scene where there's an old, old guy reading a newspaper on a park bench and a little kid going by on a scooter. By the time I made it to opening Moxie Bread Co. three years ago, uh, I knew that I wanted um, fresh ground, fresh milled in-house heirloom grain to be a part of our, uh, of our breads and our pastries. Yeah, at, at a certain point, I became very obsessed with, with, with where the wheat seed came from, who grew it, and, and, and what happens 
in the time that it got to me. And, and when that when that started to happen, um, I, I just started working directly with farmers to get the wheat seeds that I want to use and feed people. As an educator already and mentor, I hold a big stake. It's my, it's the purpose of my life, right? When I wake up in the morning, uh, to educate everyone and link up this chain, uh, so that we have access. Perhaps the grain movement has been so inspiring for so many people because it doesn't help. It doesn't work without collaboration. It, ha it only works with coming together. I think an important part of, of what drives us here is that we don't forget accessibility and affordability. So we don't work in niche or boutique situations. And it's, it's simple as breeders, one way to circumvent that is to produce high yielding crops. And so Heritage and Heirloom um, would be many of those grains that have changed over the years, been uh, brought to this country, used here, grown here, uh, and would predate modern varieties. The Maine Grain Alliance is an organization that uh, exists to help uh, build the regional grain economy in the Northeast of the United States. Uh, we're a group of millers and maltsters, farmers, brewers, seed researchers, land conservationists, and in general, folks who are very interested, interested in seeing local grains have a resurgence. We're interested in, in being able to look at, uh, from seed to table, the process that uh, grain goes through and capture as much of the value chain as we can here in a way that serves the people of our region. So um, what that might mean is that uh, grain that's grown in, in Maine, for example, uh, might also be uh, cleaned in Maine, uh, stored in Maine, milled, stone ground, milled in Maine, um, and then sold to bakeries that are also in Maine. People are gathered around this ancient symbol of community and this it has a history in our in our state why not try to uh, reinvigorate that history through um, some important work hopefully you know grain chains um, are viable here at the front range I like to see uh, some European models there's one mill 60 farmers 40 bakers. Part of me thinks it's not necessarily about a baguette or a recipe, and that it's really about the experience, because what we've created here um, is an experience. And, and, and I'm very passionate about bread, but I've realized in my three years of being at Moxie that I'm more passionate about uh, community. Uh, this is a newsletter from last May, and I titled it Bakery Dreaming. On long days in the commissary kitchen, I daydream about my bakery. The bakery will fill with voices as the benches of the long battered wood tables in front fill with customers sitting down together over coffee and pastries, as the regulars stand chatting in line, catching up on neighborhood gossip, as we stand together over the mixer, talking about yesterday's dough and troubleshooting the new batch of flour. But in the early morning, I work in silence. The sun is just lightening the sky when I pull the first bread out of the oven. It's so quiet in the bakery, I can hear the crust sing.